Dave was such a unique dude, we really did want to get to know him better, you know, and learn more about what it is that he does. Dave was one of the most interesting guys I've had come on the boat in a long time. But there's one thing that I think it's kind of like your rite of passage for fishing in Florida or fishing in the Keys, and that is to catch a big Jewfish or a Goliath grouper. So you've never caught a Goliath grouper, huh? Never caught a Goliath grouper. I don't think there's anything you could really tell anybody and prepare somebody for the actual battle you're about to wine, go through. Wine, wine. Uh, hold on. Wine, he's there. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him! Turn the handle! My name is Ali Hussein. I grew up in Southern California and now operate the largest sport fishing website in the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Malt. I got you, what you seeing? Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. Fish, when I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession. And we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. <laughs> we explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. One of the things about fishing that I think gets people so excited, you know, is just a day out on the ocean. And I know for me, one of the reasons I enjoy it is because I never know what I'm gonna see. I think the cool way to relate that maybe to your house or your office or your lifestyle is with fishing art. I know I've got a ton of it. I know all of my friends have a ton of it, whether it's in your office, on your boat, at the house, but it's really cool to kind of see your passion portrayed through the eyes of an artist. If I go in between this number three and the three A. He just dove again, same area. You want me to bump one motor over there? If you do know an artist, they, they really see things in a way that you don't. They see color, they see light. You know, we're seeing explosions and splashes, but they're just seeing a level of detail that really, in a lot of ways, brings out the essence of the sport and what makes it so exciting to go out for that next trip. Trim them down to stop us. There's bones in the, in the barracuda that extend from the skull that go into like the body. And no other fish that I've done actually has really? that so type of structure. So it actually, it's like, it's like, like dreadlocks, like hair. You know, so just like there's a million different kinds of fishing, there's a million different kinds of marine art. But some of the stuff we've seen lately has been completely different. A lot of different mediums like carving and bronze and all that. And one of the things that's been, uh, you know, floating around the internet on Instagram and stuff lately has been this bone art. And by bone art, there's artists now that are actually taking the skeletons out of these fish and they're basically recreating the structure of the fish using their bones. So I, I'm probably how, gonna take how long are you talking? Half of it. Half um, the fish? Just about. No way. Yeah. So you got a head of I want to make sure that I don't clip the end. Just like a lot of anglers, you know, after the reality of catching that massive swordfish last year soaked in, Rush and I are like, all right, now what do we do? For me, what's gonna make a mount something that I'm gonna wanna have in my house is the fact that it's unique. I mean, mounts in general are just cool pieces of art. If the more realistic, the more lifelike they are, I mean, that's gonna be the mount you want in your house, in your living room, a showpiece. We've got this awesome head, a huge tail, and first thing that came to my mind was doing one of these skeletal mounts, and this is where I got a hold of our now buddy, Dave Kustra. Good sized pilchard. It's funny, I always say, you know, there's no better way to get to know somebody either in a round of golf or on the boat. Yeah, there's a couple around us. So, you know, we made Dave an offer to come down to the Keys, do a little bit of fishing with Rush and me, and then also, you know, maybe help him collect a few samples and get to learn more about his process from start to finish. I think he was headed down that way a little bit. See if one of these guys or a couple of them will come up. They're a lot of fun to catch. A lot of times they get real acrobatic and aerial. And uh, just watch out for the teeth. We're gonna let Ali boat him, he loves Look at him teeth. coming right at the boat. So Dave was really oh, into Barracuda, and I don't think he really caught any big ones, and that was kind of our goal for the day, was to get him a big one that would make a good specimen for some of his future projects. There was a big one laying on that boat. Now what was that big wad of stuff that we saw on the sounder there? It could be blue runners. Okay. Jack. Captain Rush. Now, if you do hook a blue runner, there's a good chance a cuda might 
come after him. And you can take him as well. That's a little baby cooter, isn't it? Yeah, it looks or is like it a mackerel. Do you want this guy? No. No, you can let him go, bud. Ton of mackerel and stuff blowing up on the bait. See the ballyhoo getting chased around? Showering. There's another one right behind I see him. him yeah. bait right in front of him. I'm fired up chasing those baits. Gonna nibble. Right one. What you got there, buddy? A cuda? I think it's a cuda. I saw it splash. I saw a kingfish jumping around too, so it could be one of those. It's gotta be a cuda, right? That's no mackerel. Get me a little bit of the shark bait. One of the other cool things about Dave was, is he's not just running around the ocean catching fish, chopping their heads off, and wasting the rest of them. And that was actually something we wondered, like, how does he get these perfect specimens? He was very adamant about, you know, he needed to find one that we either have a gut hook problem with, or maybe got shark bit, or whatever. Oh yeah, that's a good one. You wanna grab him? I saw you, I got the rod. Oh, you got the rod, okay. This one, hey, I think I'm gonna keep this one because he's hooked deep. Yeah, he swallowed it. A little bit of line. That's you good. got it, you got it. Nice. Nice, man. Good job. Uh, see, that's a nice cuda right there. You know who go crazy over these guys? The pike fishermen. Oh, yeah, They man. go absolutely crazy. They want to come down and just catch these. Cudas. And a lot of people think of barracuda as tourist fish because everybody wants to catch a, you know, a barracuda or a shark. But man, a barracuda is a great game fish. It's one of those things, you know, where we're like, we usually are like, ah, oh, I got cooted, ah, oh, I got cooted. It's one man's trash. It's such a cool, unique fish. And how many pictures do you see like on Facebook Dude, of my, stoked families holding up a cooter? My son, this is one of his first fish right here, barracuda. Yeah. Local knowledge is brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. And bdoutdoors.com. The Slammer 3 uses a fully machined brass gear system. And what that gives you is extreme durability and extreme cranking power. Dura drag material is the smoothest, most durable drag material we've ever used. Yeah, that's him. With seals on the drag system, around the main shaft and pinion gear, and the body, the Slammer 3 is sealed to our highest standard yet. We're just getting started. We lost a day getting ready to go. Yeah. This one's uh, right next to the boat. Ali, you want to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That sounds that great. One? Do I want to leave can, my uh, have doubles here on the boat. This What's one's uh, a bit of a, more of a troll. Oh, crap. Another nice one, huh? Yeah, yeah. These don't bite, do they, Rush? No. No, not at all. And not at all slimy. <laughs> They're not slimy either. No, not at all. I just stuck my hand in there. That was, uh... come on, buddy. Barracudas to me, they've always been a cool fish. Big, sharp teeth. Uh, the anatomy of them is super cool. Ooh, he's your problem now, dude. There, there's, hold them good and tight. There's, you can feel that little handle on right there. Yep, got him. See, that's the thing that's, that these guys get a bad rap, like so many other fish. You know, it's like one man's trash, another man's treasure. You spend enough time with a guy like Dave, you're definitely gonna learn something about something. And he had a lot of really cool facts about our friend the Barracuda. Your kingfish and wahoo, they don't have those bones. Okay. So it took a different tract um, on its evolutionary path. And he really taught me, just talking to him throughout the day, really taught me a lot about the anatomy of the fish. So the bones come all the way back into here, basically, you're saying? Yeah, they almost go to the pectoral fin. That's crazy, man. And are they taper down to that. nothing? They ta they're very thin, they're hair-like. Okay, so if you cut the fish, you probably wouldn't even notice it? Exactly. Gotcha, exactly. well, it's, you've probably just been chopping right through them, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get a clean release on this guy. 
You know, when you meet somebody new, there's always that little like uh, feeling each other out period to see if this guy's gonna be cool. So have you done much fishing in the Keys, Dave? Not a whole lot. Really? Some sword trips, some inshore stuff, but never, uh, never this far. None of this kind of bottom fishing stuff or whatever? No, not down here. If anybody knows us or our group of friends, like when we get on the boat, first priority is start busting balls. There's only a few guides in the Keys that can put you on a hot shark bite like Rutch when you're trying to catch mud. Oh, you didn't even get on it. What, are you kidding me? You didn't even get on a good one. <laughs> I really didn't know what to expect, you know, going out in the boat with Dave and Ali. I'm just glad you guys are here to catch a few of the sharks. On one side, you have Ali, who you never know what's going to come out of his mouth. You never know what the next stupid thing is going to do. Captain Rush is guaranteed your charter's free if you get water on your glasses. Your last red grouper call didn't go so well, buddy. I love it. Another red grouper shark. Then you have Dave, who, when I first met him, seemed a little bit reserved, a little bit laid back. Uh, but that wasn't the case at all. Yeah, like, ooh, broke. Like an Odell Beckham. Started as a fish. And then it turns into the, the reef. That sounds like fun. So when you get somebody on the boat who you're comfortable fishing with and you're just one of the boy, you're gonna cut up, you're gonna have a good time, and that's what makes fishing fun. There it is. Is he puking or? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no kidding on my new pen gear. <laughs> oh. Why do we bring him? Good news is more sandwiches for us. The guy can't even puke in peace without getting his balls busted. That's awesome. There's a lot of love in here. A lot of love. It's definitely a party. Reel down to the water until it's ripping dry. BDOutdoors.com is your one-stop source for all things fishing, boating, and outdoors. Stay dialed in with current fishing reports, breaking news, and our extensive library of how-to tips. You'll learn about rigging, fish cleaning, boat maintenance. We have recipes for seafood, a game, cutting-edge videos, and gear giveaway contests. It's all free at BDOutdoors.com. There's a nibble. Feel like the right species? Oh yeah, it's going right for the rocks. Get it out of your shark. No, it's a shark. Nah, the mutton and the shark fight very similar. The only way you'll tell the difference is the shark will start fighting up high a little bit. A lot of people in South Florida love the bottom fish. Bottom fishing's a great way to catch a lot of different fish. <laughs> Not a giant, but a nice one. Hey, you look good on a taco. Look at that there guy. There it is. That's my favorite fish in the state to catch. The saw after mutton snapper. Do you want to bring a couple of these back to SD? You know damn well I want to bring that guy home in a cool. I got to answer to Jason, dude. When I come home without some fresh snapper, he's beside himself. You, he, brought, you brought the Yeti with you, the he, Yeti bag? Got the Yeti bag right. just for that. You know, there's tons of species that live on the bottom, bottom dwelling species. There you go. Dave's hooked up. Won't be the last. Yeah, this one's nicer. That's a good one, huh? There you go. Such a cool looking grouper. Right. Oh, look who it is, Rachi. <laughs> oh, that was almost pen gear. <laughs> you almost donated some pen gear. Well, at least it's shallow enough. So it was cool to get Dave down there, and he kind of had a punch list of some stuff he wanted to see. I think top of that list was a bigger barracuda. And you know, what I've learned about fishing in the Keys, doing it a lot over the last few years, is it is like the ultimate grab bag spot. And we say grab bag all the time. We don't mean it in a bad way. It's just your mutton and snapper trip can turn into a wahoo trip in a second if one swims up. Non-stop. Every second you have a jig out of the water is one less fish. Exactly. That's what fishing does. It brings everybody together, everybody lightened up. We, we had a great dinner that night and you know, Dave is now one of our fishing, he's in our fishing circle, he's one of the boys. You know, as much fun as it is to come to the Keys, catch a bunch of different fish, but there's one thing that I think it's kind of like your rite of passage for fishing in Florida or fishing in the Keys, and that is to catch a big Jew fish or a Goliath grouper. 
So you've never caught a Goliath grouper, huh? Never caught a Goliath grouper. I mean, unfortunately, I don't think you could uh, mount one of those, but. No, they're protected, but that'd still be pretty neat to, to see them up close in person. Do you do stand up for Goliath or do you keep Rodney in, in the rod holder? Uh, you could do it however you'd like, you know, some people, if their backs bother them, they're gonna, you know, leave it in the rod holder. Other people Dude. wanna try and fight it at first and. And then they realize, okay. Yeah. There's one species that you're gonna take a new guy on the boat when he says, I wanna catch a big fish, I wanna get beat up. There, there is that species and that's the Goliath grouper. And he had never caught one. He said he'd seen a few caught, he'd really like to try it and it was time to put him into the torture chamber. Pretty large wreck. A lot of stuff for them to run us into, cut us off. So, you know, there's a fine line. You want to be close enough to the wreck to draw the fish away from it. Right. And, but you don't want to be so close where he's going to run you in immediately. Put it on the bottom and pretty much sit it in the rod holder for, and just wait for that boom, boom, boom. You see that rod dip? That's him. And he's not gonna, it's not gonna be like a black grouper or a gag grouper who's gonna eat it and go straight for the house. He'll eat it and sit there. The thing about these Goliath groupers is they are so big and so powerful. If you try to target them on top of the structure where they live, you'll never stop them. They'll break you off almost every single time unless you just get flat lucky. Let's see what this guy will do for us here, Dave. You gonna put him right on? I'm gonna put him right on. No time like the present. You know, like I said, you wanna, Get the fish away from the wreck. So put the heat on right at, right off the bat. Yeah. You guys just don't have a lot of Goliaths up where you're at, Dave? We do. Um, a lot around the inlets. Dave was such a unique dude. We really did want to get to know him better, you know, and learn more about what it is that he does. So Dave, how did you get into the skull business? I've always loved nature. I've always loved fishing and, um, in osteology and, and, and bones. I, I was curious, I always wondered about um, the architecture of life, um, bones themselves. The, it, I, it, was, it was captivating as, as a child and uh, the mystery behind it. What was the first fish you did? Uh, bluefish. He's doing some amazing stuff and just the way he talks about the biology of these fish as it relates to their structure and this is why this fish has a big jaw, that's why this fish has a big tail. I mean, he knows these fish inside really better than any of us do. The thing that really fascinates me about what Dave's doing is there is no blueprint. I mean, he's writing the book as he goes. He's, he's making his own man instruction manual for each species as he goes. So now is it like building anything, like the first time you do it takes forever, second time it's half the time, third time it's half of that again yes, kind of thing? Yes, yes. I tend to memorize and, and document the order that I do it in. And so you keep notes on the different and species? I keep notes and, and sketches and, and... Yeah, you're real scientific un, about it. Un, it's cool. Understand where there's spacing and gaps that have to be accounted for to, to keep it look as lifelike as possible. Okay. One thing that was really interesting in talking to Dave with is he only wants prime candidates. This process is so labor intensive. In fact, he told me it would take him 300 to 350 man hours to do a swordfish. And he also said the bigger the specimen, generally the easier it is for him because it's just bigger parts and pieces. Do you ever think you'll have like a gallery, you know, with all your pieces? I mean, you got quite a collection so far, correct? Uh, I do, I do. And, and I would hope to have a gallery, not just in my living room. Um, that's. I would like to uh, provide some pieces to museums eventually. Um, I really want to see what I can do and, and get into the entire fish. That's kind of the next step. The, uh, the ultimate goal would be to do the whole skeletons for the, the giant swordfish in bluefin and um, big fish. I think what you're doing, it's a museum piece. It's a piece of art. It's not cheap. It's very labor intensive. But in the end, you get something you can remember that fish by for the rest of your life. It's awesome. This, this opportunity to have that type of mount where it's a, a trophy sized fish, whether it's a grouper or your swordfish or even a wahoo, um, and you, you, you can commemorate it. It'll last forever, essentially, uh, preserved and um, uh, in, in, you know, different than a regular the guy. Yep, the regular. Wine, wine, wine. Uh, hold on. Wine, he's there. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him! Turn the handle! It's one of the most ancient forms of hide and seek known to man. And nobody knows how to play the fishing game better 
than the backcountry guides and offshore captains of the Florida Keys and Key West. Ready or not, here we come. As close as you're gonna get to a sure thing for catching billfish is Casa Vieja Lodge. They're here, man. This has been a 20 year run, buddy. These things haven't left, there's no cycle. See, when it comes to sailfish, then this is the real deal. The amount of sailfish here is ridiculous. Local knowledge is brought to you by Andros Boatworks, adventure never ends. Mustad Hooks, defining fishing hooks since 1877. Aftco, the American fishing tackle company. Costa, see what's out there. And by Casa Vieja Lodge, experience five-star angling in tropical Guatemala. Wine, 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 uh, hold on. Wine, he's there. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him! Turn the handle! Wine, he's just a little fish. What are you doing? Hurry, um, wine! I think if there's one thing that's universal amongst fishermen, fishermen like to see other fishermen in pain. Now he's trying to get back in that wreck and cut you off, so you gotta keep max heat on him. Can you get it in there? Yeah. Nice, nice. Right. Now put it to him. Down, just short down, pump down, and wind. Down, down, down. down. Just, and then let's see. You can get an inch at a time, an inch at a time. Okay, you're not here. I don't think there's anything you could really tell anybody and prepare somebody for the actual battle you're about to go through. Wind down. down. Perfect. If you're only turning the handle once, down. you're doing good. There you go. You got you got him coming your way now. You're going in the right direction. Keep there that heat go. on him. You got him coming. You got him coming. Perfect. Now he's trying to get you under the boat. He's trying to get you under the boat. Watch that angle, watch that angle. All right, buddy, so we're in trouble here. I'm backing off. Don't lift up, don't lift up. Is the rod's gonna go? Just don't come straight up, because see the angle? Or let's go up forward. Come on, back the drag, way off. Way off. Just not in the free school. That fish walked Dave around that boat two or three times. No. How's, that, how's L4, L5 feel about right now? Tell you what. That was, I underestimated him. Okay, right now, get a couple cranks if you can. I know your back's killing you, buddy. You're sweating a little bit there, big guy. A couple cranks. Keep it low and flat. There you go, let the rod lift them for you. There, you see the rod lifting them, not you, and your back. Up on that rod. Yeah, he's done. <laughs> Through Dave or the fish? <laughs> yep. He's got yeah, once you're, you're getting beat up, man, I mean, you're taking body shots, he's hitting you in the head and all that, the only way to redeem yourself is to get that fish to the boat. Keep doing that perfect short pump. I really didn't even expect how big it was. Uh, the rod looked like it was gonna break. Dave was pretty much crying like a girl. And there he is, your first one. Holy guy. cow. Guy. Wow. He's not very big, but we'll work with Woo. him. What do you think about that? Look at that thing, man. Look at the size of that Holy animal. Sh now I don't, don't feel so bad that it's pretty my regularly, ass. Oh, you too. Oh, you, did. you did great. Look at that. His lip is so big, the circle hook is stuck in his lip. It didn't even make it around the corner, that giant hook. <sighs> Holy sh. Look at the size of that animal. Now, is that the biggest fish you ever put your hand on? That is the biggest fish. I've ever seen. Uh, is that yeah, the biggest buddy. fish you've ever caught? That's the biggest fish I've the ever caught. Monster, huh? Like the what a monster. Any sword fish, How much you think uh, that weighed? And Dave did it just barely. It was kind of neck and neck down the stretch there. It was not the prettiest thing or the, the best piece of angling you're ever going to see. But the dude got it done. Dave, Dave was one of the most interesting guys I've had come on the boat in a long time. Uh, somebody that talented, that artistic and who knows that much about the anatomy of the fish. The next fish I catch that, you know, I want as a showpiece in my house will definitely be going to Dave. 